Today I want to speak about IBS, a very uncomfortable but an extremely relevant topic. And because it's so awkward and uncomfortable, a lot of people try and find help alternative ways than having to sit in front of a person and explain all kinds of gross things that's happening with your bowels. I would strongly advise against that. Because of IBS, it's uh, what we call a functional gut disorder, meaning in other words that you'll go for your scope, you'll have your gastroscopy, colonoscopy, and the doctor will tell you there's nothing wrong. Yet your symptoms are very real. And if you then start reading up, oh, I'm constipated, let's do this, or I have diarrhea, let's do that, um, it usually doesn't solve the whole problem because irritable bowel syndrome has got a lot of reasons for presenting, and those are different in all people. I'll shortly summarize for you uh, what we found through Professor John Hunter, um, his work at Edinburgh Hospital, is that there's five distinct areas um, or almost reasons for IBS. And if we can address these personally and we can address them effectively, we found that about 85% of IBS cases can actually be much improved, if not completely, um, completely managed. So what they are is first there's a side of IBS that's called malfermentation. Now that is when your bacteria in your gut is unhappy. If you have a idea of how that looks, um, your bacteria in your gut is literally outnumbering the amount of human cells you have in your body. So they have a massive, massive effect on what you absorb, on your immune system, on your gut health, on whether you have diarrhea or constipation, discomfort, bloating. And that's bacteria as well as things like yeast that sometimes take opportunistic um, take opportunity to then to then grow. The second one would be what we call overload and overflow. Now that means that your base problem is actually constipation, and then when you almost you you go to the bathroom, but you feel like you don't actually completely go, or you can't completely empty your bowels. And then you have this sort of like pattern where you either have constipation, which is now where you have this cork that you can't pass. And then when you are um, blocked up, then only the, the, the stool that's liquid enough to pass over the cork is visible um, to you. So you have this idea that you've got both constipation and diarrhea, but it is then actually mainly constipation. So in that case, fiber is very important and depending whether you're bloated or not bloated, that will also determine what type of fiber we can use for this or whether we need to look at something like a stool softener. So definitely dietary adjustments, very important. Um, then your next type is actually muscular. So if you have a injury or you have got a, a type of a stomach pain that is affected by bending, by coughing, um, we generally would say that that's more a muscular disorder rather than IBS, but it can present actually as the same. And then there is stress, and stress is just a major component when it comes to IBS. Now, we have a way of assessing how much of it could be from stress and whether stress is the main cause or whether it's some of the contributing factors. And I can't help you much with that, but I'm sure you guys can find a lot of resources, good resources of reputable practitioners that can, can sort of help you with that. And again, I do feel that's quite an individualized um, approach. You can't just say, okay, everyone sit quietly and breathe and then your stress will be fine uh, because we're not all wired the same. And then there's also hormonal reasons. So a lot of women in their reproductive years will find that whenever they are on their period or just before or ovulating, then gut symptoms seem to be much worse. And in that case, we actually need to balance the hormones more likely than focusing on particularly diet even. So as you can see, there are so many various reasons for IBS and along with that there's so many various solutions I mean we've got these five types and then we've got like three tiers of how you how how almost like strict you need to be to to solve the problem and then we usually would be going very much individually on what is the combination of factors that we need to keep in mind um, for your particular symptoms so I know it's awkward I know it's embarrassing we as dietitians talk about um, bowel health and your gut 
all day long, so we are by no means embarrassed, so please feel free to, if you have any of these symptoms and you are struggling with your digestive health, to come find some help. Thank you for watching. I hope this was at least a bit helpful and I hope that if you have got some of these symptoms that you've got a bit of hope that the, the, the symptoms can be managed if you're working alongside a practitioner that knows what they're doing. I hope you have a beautiful week and weekend and we will speak soon. Bye.